when she raised her hand, it was to reach the highest point. When she raised her hand, it was to touch the stars. To find a cure. To give us a reason to dream. When he raised his hand, it was to stand up for his rights. To start over. To learn against all odds. When she raises her hand, it's to answer yes, to seize her future. Every change starts with a powerful act. Raise your hand, find education. Hello, and welcome to the launch of Financing GPE 2025. We've been living through tough times, but for the next 30 minutes, we will talk to you about hope. We have a once in a generation opportunity to make sure all the girls and boys in the world can go to school, get an education. But first, let's hear from who will lead this global movement to fund education. His Excellency, Prime Minister Boris Johnson from the United Kingdom and His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta of Kenya. I'm absolutely delighted that the UK will be joining our Kenyan friends in co-hosting the replenishment of the Global Partnership for Education. Kenya is indeed delighted to co-host this landmark event with the United Kingdom. And I'm pleased to join Prime Minister Boris Johnson in launching a campaign that correctly situates education as a defining issue for our collective future. Since long before I became Prime Minister, I was a passionate uh, advocate of increasing access to education globally and for girls in particular. And that's because I firmly believe, as Plutarch did, that the mind is not a bottle to be filled, but a fire to be kindled. And it is education that provides the spark. It's education that unlocks doors to opportunity and prosperity. It's education that allows a girl to escape grinding poverty and to avoid the very worst kinds of exploitation. And it's education that helps young people from every background in every nation to take the kernel of an idea and turn it into an invention or a business that not only transforms their own life, but also changes the world for the better. None of this is new or exactly controversial. We all know, for example, that if every girl in the world enjoys 12 years of quality education, then economies will grow, poverty will fall, lives will be saved. But even before the coronavirus struck, Almost 260 million children were being denied the schooling that should be their birthright. And now that number has soared past 1.3 billion. Tens of millions will likely never return to the classroom. It's a toll of wasted potential and missed opportunity that is a tragedy not just for the children and their families, but for each and every one of us. So, I'll be using the UK's upcoming presidency of the G7 to keep education firmly on the international agenda. And in the year ahead, let's all come together as a global community, raise our hands for education and back up our good intentions with the cold, hard cash that will let the GPE continue its vital work. We hold this world in trust for current, and future generations. 
and it is therefore our duty not only to preserve and better the world that we live in for our sake, but also to provide those generations with the platforms and tools with which to take the baton from us in the race towards a greater and better future for all humanity. Good quality education is one of the most effective ways through which we can achieve this noble goal. With quality education, our children can discover their talents and potential, reinforce their character, bring dreams into reality, and develop the skills and competencies that will serve them positively for an entire lifetime. Beyond the individual child, quality education empowers entire generations of young people, following their boundless reservoirs of energy, creativity, and innovation to come to the fore. Quality education for our children drives human progress, spurs the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals, and forges global citizens who are better equipped to lend and lead the charge against the challenges of climate change, pandemics, insecurity, inequality, and justice. As leaders, it is our sacred duty to breathe life into the promise of a better tomorrow for all by investing in quality education for all. We have, over the last 15 years, implemented a comprehensive education program that has resulted in significant achievements. Notable of these achievements is the attainment of universal primary education and gender parity in school enrollments, as well as a 100% transition from primary to secondary school. In walking this journey, I am happy to note that the Global Partnership for Education has been a true and strong partner. Without the support of GPE, we could not have been where we are today. And that is why today, to support the Global Partnership for Education financing campaign aimed at raising at least 5 billion US dollars for the education of the world's children. Our past and our future peace, prosperity, and progress at national, regional, continental, and global levels requires enhanced investment in our greatest resource, our children. Before the pandemic, 258 million children were out of school. Each of them denied the right to education, the right to hope, and many more in school were not learning much. We were in a learning crisis. School closures caused by coronavirus only reinforced our essential education needs to our future. But when all of this is over, global inequality in education will likely grow. Millions of less privileged children in developing countries may never return to school. Growing up in Nigeria, I struggled with learning difficulties. I couldn't keep up with the curriculum and I was constantly bullied at school, but I persevered and I'm so glad I did because now I can speak up for my own rights and for the rights of others. I can help my community grow stronger. Victoria is right, both about the learning crisis and the significant opportunity we now have. The pandemic has underlined the fact that education and schools are the bedrock of societies, 
places of learning and so much more. Schools are where children build friendships vital to their happiness, get daily meals and in situations of conflict and crisis find normality and hope. They are platforms for social reform and health and environmental learning that can save lives and strengthen our communities. The economic and social impacts of the pandemic risk jeopardising decades of hard-fought-for education progress in lower-income countries. This crisis is a clarion call for action and a doorway to the future we want, where children are learning, are healthy and safe and have a world of opportunities open to them. GPE's financing campaign is the answer to that call. GPE is the only global partnership and fund dedicated entirely to helping children in lower income countries get a quality education and offering transformative change in countries where children are at greatest risk of not learning. With an ambitious new strategy, GPE is acting on the most important lesson from the pandemic, the urgent need to adapt and transform. Problems of the future need education systems thoughtfully designed for the future. With a fully financed GPE with at least $5 billion, we will support countries to build education systems for the 21st century. We will enable 175 million girls and boys to learn and get 88 million more children into school, including 46 million girls. This is the world's opportunity to reverse the tide of the learning crisis. Raise your hand and join us. I grew up in Sierra Leone, but spent much of my childhood fleeing war across the region. I really saw what war did to kids, especially to girls. So many girls around me dropped out and got married as children. But even without war, every day as a girl was a harsh reality of discrimination, violence, and limits on what we could hope to do with our lives. School was my safe space. It was where I realized I could be anything I wanted. I work with adolescent girls now, and they tell me the same thing. School is their shelter. I see how education uplifts them in the dream of a better future. I believe true liberation, equality, especially for girls, starts with a quality education. Education is not only the foundation of children's futures, it keeps hope alive. I was kidnapped with my mother, my sister, and 200 other people while attending church. Three years, the unthinkable happened again. I was dragged out of the school bus, full of classmates, and taken as a sole hostage by the guerrillas from the park for seven long months. I know how it feels like when hope is gone. Education helps create opportunity for children to grow, to learn and develop skills and confidence. It helps break the vicious circle of a life of poverty, crime and insecurity. We must invest in education in every child's future. In times of crisis, we are challenged to take urgent action and make bold decisions. At GPE, we seek to tackle the urgent needs highlighted by young people. We look to transform education systems so they are fit for the 21st century, resilient to future shocks, and firmly focused on equity and learning. These systems will secure every child's right to education build an empowered and trained education workforce, including teachers, close the digital divide, and most importantly, drive gender equality and inclusion of all marginalized children. GPE focuses on systems level change in education for countries in the greatest need. We target the hardest to reach, children living in poverty, suffering discrimination, 
and living through fragility and conflict. We focus on doing the right thing in the right places at the right times and at scale that ensures lasting change. Now, we are thinking even bigger and bolder. We have heard the calls from partner countries for transformation, and we are ready to respond. A fully funded GPE with at least $5 billion will spark lasting change in education in up to 87 countries that are home to over 1 billion school-aged children. We want to make sure that no one is left behind. I interact with these children with disabilities every day. You would be surprised at how enthusiastic and creative with their children with disabilities have. They will find a way to communicate and learn and have fun. When we are given the tools to do our jobs, in my case, everything I need to support teachers to be more inclusive or to support teachers and students to learn sign language, we can really bring out the best in our students. Young people today are hopeful and we are ready to create a better future. The rapidly changing world of technology, the changing world of work, these are incredible opportunities. But we can only make the best of them if we have a quality education that teaches critical thinking, communication, and creativity. In Pakistan, we met young girls brimming with energy, ready to learn and explore. They want to get jobs and they want to support themselves and their communities. Education systems around the world must prepare every child for the future. Think about what we could achieve if every girl like the ones we met had the tools to think creatively and to innovate. Progress would start ground up. Des centaines de millions d'enfants sont encore hors de l'école. Ce défi est un défi pour l'humanité tout entière. Nous avons donc un défi de scolarisation, mais nous avons surtout un défi de transformation des systèmes éducatifs des pays pour que l'éducation soit au rendez-vous des objectifs de développement durable. La crise sanitaire de la pandémie de la COVID-19 a montré encore comment, combien notre système éducatif sont vulnérables. Et devant cette situation, le partenariat mondial pour l'éducation a encore fait preuve de réactivité, d'agilité et de flexibilité pour allouer un financement exceptionnel d'urgence qui a permis à des millions d'enfants de rejoindre l'école dans des délais très courts. Une éducation dans les pays en, en développement, une éducation des filles, une éducation des garçons est une éducation pour un monde plus stable, un monde plus prospère, un monde plus durable et un monde plus uni. Every time I tell my story, I can hardly believe I'm here. I've been a child soldier in Sierra Leone. I've experienced emotional and physical trauma. I've lost my loved ones. Education rescued me, but I was one of the lucky ones. Many children like me never got an education 
And so today, there are millions out there that are facing massive challenges in learning. We need education systems that are inclusive and that can deliver a quality education to every child, especially those who are less privileged and in challenging circumstances. Every child deserves to benefit from the power of education. GPE is committed to including all children into education systems. It brings quality education to the most remote areas. It ensures that our teachers are better trained so that they can work for the progress of every child. Raise your hand, invest in the future of each and every child. Invest in GPE. We are seeking at least $5 billion to fund GPE programs over the next five years. In the bigger picture, this is an investment towards more sustainable, peaceful, and resilient societies. But it starts as a smart investment in education. $5 billion would represent nearly a third of discretionary finance available to education ministries in low-income partner countries. As their own government budgets are being further squeezed by the economic fallout from COVID, our funding would give them the ability to make the reforms that they need. It will help them unblock the most challenging bottlenecks in their education systems and drive transformation. And the impact goes way beyond education. It has the potential to add $164 billion to developing countries' economies, lift 18 million people out of poverty, and protect two million girls from child marriage. That is an investment worth making. Fundamentally, GPE's purpose is to give children hope, opportunity and agency. That is the power of education. The experiences and perspectives from young people, like Muhammad, drive GPE's core vision for education, which centres equality. We want to, piece by piece, dismantle the systemic barriers that keep children out of school. We want to enable education systems to really work for children. If we can reach all children, especially girls, we will create a powerful engine of social and economic recovery from COVID and one which will drive sustained progress. The challenges of our times know no borders of nations, cultures, economic and social classes. The most powerful response is working in partnership. I want to thank Prime Minister Boris Johnson of the UK and President Uhuru Kenyatta of Kenya, our fantastic activists, for raising their hands for a fully funded GPE. I am here today to urge other leaders to join hands and invest in education. While the task of strengthening education systems is a difficult and expensive one, the rewards are more than worth it. As Kenya's collaboration with the Global Partnership for Education has shown, time and time again, concerted efforts does and do bring tangible rewards. Fellow leaders, it is for that reason that Kenya is proud to join the United Kingdom as the co-host for the Global Partnership for Education Financing Conference, and we are ready to raise our voices and to raise our hands for children everywhere. To the children of the world, we want you to know that we will do everything in our power to secure that future by investing in the best education for all of you. Fund education, fund GPE. If we educate one child, 
we can change one life. If we educate tens of millions of children, we can change the world. So let's get on with the job. Mm -hmm.